Hey, what's up, it's Kier, and I'm going to kind of give you a little rundown on how I make digital paintings, I guess, weird, funky computer art stuff, in a uh, Commodore 64 program called Lores Draw, right? Yes. First, you're going to need to set up a C64 emulator on your computer. The one that I have is CCS64 version 3.9.2 um, on Windows. And I also use Ubuntu on some of my machines, so I've done it on there too. It's pretty easy. Don't think I've put one on a Mac OS yet, but I assume it's around the same kind of pretty simple process. So once you get your emulator, you want to get a uh, copy of lowresdraw.d64 is the file version that this one is in. And I don't know where I got this one from. If you want to get this from me, just let me know and I'll send it to you. <laughs> if you search around online enough, you can probably find this version. I believe this one is uh, V2. I don't know if the one's different, but basically either just open it in your file category or I just like to double click on the thing. So this is the title screen that's going to happen written by Dr. Edge. Very cool. Oop, well. Okay, there we go. So if you just press F2, you get a help screen. But I think I've learned more by like hands-on actually messing around with this than reading the help screens. I think sometimes the things are correct there, but I don't know, just the way that my approach to making images with this, maybe it's tailored to um, things that aren't really necessarily available on the help side. I kind of had to like fiddle around with it and therefore I might not know everything about this, but I know a whole lot. I know how to make a, a basic thing. If you just type, right, you get, you get text. If you put in caps, you get caps, like the shift key, right? If you do control, you get, um, these are called Petsky characters, and um, they are, if you look at a Commodore 64 keyboard, there are these symbols on the side of the keys. Uh, this was kind of like an integration in to the system. Kind of think of like early Unicode type deal. That's one way <laughs> to approach it. However, there's another mode in here that if you press control shift, it, it kicks into. And you can see that my capital letters turn to Petsky characters as well. Um, if you didn't already pick up on it, I'm not using a mouse. I'm using my arrow keys to navigate around. So there's no mouse involved in the, I should probably get the cursor off the screen, no mouse involved in, the, in making art this way in this program. Everything here is kind of uh, color on black, right? Fortunately, I don't know if there's any way to change the actual background color. That's kind of like the monitor default that's going on. There's this possible, I just don't know the keyboard shortcut to do it, because a lot of things seem to be not listed in the help menus. But uh, I found out through trial and error that if you <laughs> go uh, tab R, it puts you into negative. So now you can press the space bar, and instead of getting black, you get the color. Now, if you want to, uh, if you want to change that back, I have in my notes to push Tab M, and it kind of starts a new line and does it. I guess that's correct. Yeah. So Tab R to get back to that. So say you want to not just have yellow. You go Control, and then you go on the on the upper keys. One through eight are going to give you orange, brown, pink, gray light gray, light green, blue, white, and that's one through eight. If you want more colors, you go tab and control. One is black, you can't see it, but if I, you know, so, oh, I should probably do this. Whoa, great news, okay. Two is white, again, I don't think there's a difference between those two. Uh, crimson. Uh, light blue, purple, light purple, whatever, uh, dark green, dark blue, and yellow, that seems to be the default here. 
so you got a lot of colors to choose from, right? You can fill in things like this. There's also a, a drawing mode that you hit F2. Just kidding, you hit F... Also just kidding, that's not correct. F1, oh, right, okay. So I don't know a lot about this mode, and I think there is more. I think you can draw lines. If you just go to F2 and actually read what's happening here, like B is box, C is circle. Um, let's just test that. So I actually don't know how to turn this line off. Oh, enter key turns it off, I guess. So, oh, freaky. Um, I just pressed B. Whoa, okay, so if I go somewhere and then press B, enter, it does that. There's a whole ton of stuff you could do with this mode. Oh, okay, so you go... I don't know why. Um, that's kind of weird. I feel like I'm not doing that the right way. So I'm, I'm hitting the L button for line. Anyway, you get the picture. What else is there? So I don't really know. I don't really use this mode that much just because I kind of... You, you can basically get like a quarter of a, a pixel, right? Because, yeah, one, two, three, four makes up a whole like text spot. Um, so that's cool. But draw right. I don't really know how to get to, to any other... I don't know. Okay, with the Petsky characters, they are here like... <laughs> where <laughs> where you like get the symbols from because that's kind of the coolest part but it's also cool to have text in it but to make shapes and I don't know it's fun I like it better then that's the appeal to this <laughs> instead of just like normal ASCII it has all these other wacky things in it obviously you have like your QWERTY th deal ASCII whatever you want to call it the normal alphabet stuff if you have shift on you get your like that jams, which is pretty normal. Besides the the plus and the these are kind of squirrely. Uh, another thing that's squirrely is the tilde key is an arrow, and if you push shift, doesn't do anything. If you push control, doesn't do anything. I thought the arrow was also something else. Guess not. Some of these are also just kind of miscellaneous, miscellany. Those are correct to what the keyboard, my keyboard says at least. You know, poke around. I will say that sometimes I have like permanently stranded myself inside the program where like, I guess just like I hit a bug or something where it wouldn't, I couldn't switch back modes. I couldn't do that, you know. So if that happens to you, don't blame yourself. You know, all you got to do is take a screenshot to save it and then you kind of have to be done start over I don't know it's all experimental right it's okay my numpad doesn't really do anything in this scenario I'm gonna change the color for sake of mixing it up and uh, one thing that I did find that should be noted is um, my insert delete and end keys are uh, special characters and if I'd go shift it turns that's like the little animal one. that's the coolest one that's my delete key on shift uh, yeah so I also love um, the asterisks I think there's a vertical asterisk somewhere in here too for my keyboard layout you might have extra keys that might do something I don't I have no idea how this is mapped I actually I don't really in my head I have no idea like what a c64 keyboard how it's laid out and, and if I'm like missing something that's on a normal keyboard it might be the design was kind of interesting for the <laughs> for the time you can like paint pictures with this right and again you're gonna have that black behind everything but if you make it negative it's you're just gonna have to work with the black right and but if you take a screenshot and like import it into GIMP or Photoshop or whatever and turn it negative then you have white in the background and maybe then maybe you use the hue changer to get some different colors that's something similar to what I just did a second ago with this little selfie makeup thing here. Um, the background is th this situation, <laughs> um, but I, I made a uh, image out of it. Done that with a few other posts. You can see, uh, you can see one right here and right here. Um, so that's usually the way that I approach making visual art in this environment. Um, but obviously, that's you don't have to like you could purposely be like oh I love the uh, the hash mark 
you can purposely be like, okay, I'm gonna like make a face or whatever. It's not just pixel art. It's you have the pet ski stuff going on, and it's also run by the keyboard, so it's a little bit like it forces you to do different things. Sometimes limitation within a certain artistic environment makes the best stuff, makes the coolest product. That's what I love about um, digital art in a non-traditional way. That's not just like how realistic can we make oil paint look. You know, that has its place, but there's just the, uh, especially going backward, especially going like things you can find for free, things that are low data, things that are just super simple and um, jankily written. Like sometimes you can really get into some weird territories. I mean, that even goes with things that are released now, like with apps and stuff, photo editing apps. It's like, just try a bunch of stuff. If you have an old device, if you have an old Android phone, that's just sitting, boot it up, put some cool stuff on it, and see, you know, run your stuff through like a million filters, see what happens. It's, it's, uh, there's endless possibilities. And, but this is just a fun thing that I, I set out with the intention of wanting to make art in this environment, specifically, uh, Petsky character art. I mean, obviously, there's better petsky artists than me. I'm not really trying to paint anything specific. I'm just kind of barfing as I do. Maybe just a screenshot that deal. Sometimes I feel like the combination of shift, uh, shift control and tab does something, but I don't know. Explore on your own. You might find out things that I've never even come across. Definitely possible, right? No, that's about a, this is a, a fun, fun painting where we're really going <sighs> what's up this <laughs> so I hope you learned something I hope you try this if you do tell me how it went I hope it's fun I don't know okay thanks for watching bye get out of here